Hello, I'm Russ, N4RTD, and I want to give you some quick tips if you're operating on D-Star. This is not a D-Star instructional video, but some tips to make sure that you're being heard across a network, specifically when you're using a repeater, also known as a gateway. There are times when you're using a gateway and you're talking to people locally, but what about people who are connected up with hotspots or maybe even the repeater being connected to a reflector? You're going to want to make sure you're being heard by everyone. So these tips will help to make sure that you're being heard. Our operating tip topics today are going to be resources that are already available for D-Star users. We're going to talk about operating tip one, which is radio settings for gateways or repeaters whether you're programming your standard memories or whether you're using DR mode, the repeater list, why operating tip number one is the most important, operating tip two will be repeater etiquette, and operating tip three, when you know you need a hotspot. There are resources already available to you on YouTube. A simple search on YouTube for intro to D-Star or getting started with D-Star will take you to videos on how to use your D-Star radio as well as the D-Star network. But what many of these videos don't provide are some of the settings which we're going to discuss, specifically those related to the gateway or your local repeater's operation and how your radio should be set for normal operations. How you program your radio's standard memories or use the repeater list memories in DR mode will directly impact who or who will not hear you. So let's get right into operating tip number one, radio settings for gateways or better known as your local repeater. Memory channels. Later D-Star radios have both standard memories and repeater list memories. Standard memory channels are what most people are familiar with. You program the frequencies, tones, offsets, and name and the entry of the channel and then move on to the next to program the next memory channel. But repeater list entries are those that are usually populated from a download site such as dstarinfo.com or your radio manufacturer. This repeater list has channels that have all the information of D-Star and FM repeaters along with their GPS data so you can search for repeaters that are closest for you. A great feature if you're traveling. So here's an example of standard memory channels that have been programmed for an ID5100. On the left further side in the programming lines for each channel you'll find your standard typical frequency, duplex, what, which mode it is, FM or DV. But on the right hand side are some of the most important pieces of information, specifically if you're programming a standard memory channel for your local D-Star gateway or repeater. Here is an example of a repeater list or DR memory channels that have been programmed into an ID5100. These were downloaded from a website called dstarinfo.com. Many radio manufacturers also have DR lists that can be downloaded. I've had my best luck though with dstarinfo.com. On the left hand side of the programming you'll find the repeater, the location, you'll find also the RPT1 and RPT2 settings which are the most important piece as well as on the far right hand side the GPS coordinates of the specific repeaters so that you can use your radio's GPS to tell you what the closest repeater to you that you'd like to use is and this happens to work out great when you're traveling. Now when we go back and look at the standard memory channels the most important entries, as I mentioned earlier, are off to the right-hand side, specifically RPT1 and RPT2. RPT1 is the local port and the repeater that you're getting into, and RPT2 is where you would set whether you're either operating locally or whether you're operating through the repeater's gateway. And RPT2 is going to be one of the most important settings you're going to make. I've seen a number of folks program a standard memory channel to use a DV D-Star repeater and use the A, B, or C port that they're coming in on as using both RPT1 and RPT2 as that local port that they're coming in on. In this particular case, RPT1 and RPT2 are set for WC4 PEMB, the UHF port on the WC4 PEM gateway. But when you transmit on the repeater, you'll be heard locally on the repeater, but that's it. It will only be local RF only. So in this case, when you have RPT1 and RPT2 programmed to the local port on the repeater, and you happen to jump in on a QSO with someone who might have your local gateway repeater linked to a reflector, they may hear your friends, but not you. This can be frustrating for not only you, but also the people who are on reflectors or hotspots. 
and people connecting hotspots to their local gateway repeater is getting to be quite common, or somebody who might be linking their gateway to your local gateway and want to talk to local people on the repeater and then aren't sure whether their transmission is being heard because they don't know whether you're transmitting or not. The answer to this problem is easy. When you're programming your standard memories, make sure you set RPT1 as the local port of the repeater in the gateway you're accessing, and RPT2 with a G entry to make sure that you're being heard not only by those connected to the reflectors, but also by those connected to a repeater using hotspots. When your standard memory for a D-Star repeater is programmed correctly, you'll be heard by anyone that you can hear. That includes not only anybody on the local D-Star repeater gateway, but also those on the global D-Star network, people who are connected to the reflector, any remote D-Star gateways, and anyone who's connected to the gateway using a hotspot. Earlier when we talked about the repeater list that you can download that you would be using when you're in DR mode, that those entries are already configured correctly, it's how you use that list in DR mode that makes sure that you're still able to be heard by everybody on the network. So earlier we talked about not using the repeater list in DR mode correctly, and one way not to use it is that when you're in DR mode, of course you're going to have your local gateway and repeater in the from box, but in the to box, if you use local CQ, that's the same as having RPT1 and RPT2 set to the local port. So don't use this as your normal when you're using DR mode, because only the people locally on the repeater are going to be able to hear you, and anyone else connected in the D-Star network, whether it's a reflector, a gateway, or somebody connected in the hotspot, they're not going to hear you. So, when you're in the DR mode, using a repeater list, you'll want to make sure that your gateway, your local repeater, is in the from box. But whether your gateway or repeater is connected to a reflector or not, you should always have used reflector in the to box. This way, anyone connected to the gateway with a hotspot or those are connected to a reflector will hear you. So, as a rule of thumb, when operating on a D-Star gateway, your local repeater, be sure to always be using a setting that has RPT1 set as the local port you're connecting to and RPT2 as the port of the gateway, usually G. You will have a better experience on D-Star, and so will those on the D-Star network. Now that everyone's hearing you, it's time to move on to operating tip number two, which is repeater or gateway etiquette. Remember, it's not just you using the repeater. Connecting to a reflector or another gateway on the repeater is acceptable, as long as you're not just listening for long periods of time, but you're also interacting with people on that connection. Before making a connection, key up and ask anyone if anyone is currently using your repeater or your gateway. If no one's using a repeater or gateway, link up with your desired reflector or gateway. If you do want to listen to a reflector or gateway for extended periods of time, then you'll want to see operating tip number three. So operating tip number three is when you know you need a hotspot. Do you like to monitor a specific reflector or gateway, let's say like Busy Reflector 30 Charlie, for long periods of time? If so, it might be time for you to have your own repeater gateway, which is basically a hotspot. Having your own hotspot gives you the freedom to roam around the D-Star network all you want without tying up the local repeater. Hotspots are relatively inexpensive and easy to set up for D-Star. The hotspots will respond to commands from your radio, just like your local repeater or gateway. When you start searching for a hotspot, one of the more popular ones that you'll find are Pi Star hotspots. They're based on the Raspberry Pi. You'll find the Jumbo Spot MMDVM for usually under $100, and it's a simplex hotspot, and it works great on D-Star. You'll also find duplex hotspots that are based on the Raspberry Pis with a, a dual radio hat board. Those run around $125, at least at the time of this video. They're controlled using the Pi Star dashboard where you can see recent connections that have been on and as well as changing reflectors that you can do from your radio but also you can do via the software. And if you're mobile you might even look into something like an open spot such as the open spot 4 pictured here. It has an internal battery allows you to carry it in your pocket. It'll link up great with your home Wi-Fi or even your cellular Wi-Fi hotspot and allow you to get onto the D-Star network. Nice to travel with this one. So if there's anything you leave this video with, it should be to use Reflector all the time in DR mode or making sure that RPT1 and specifically RPT2 are set correctly in your standard memories to use the gateway. If not, the other D-Star users might not hear you, and that can be very frustrating, not just for you, but for them. 
So enjoy D-Star.